Today I'm sharing a video that I've been wanting to do for quite a while. Many of you have asked for this, and that is how to make kombucha. I wanted to make this video super simple, so if you're looking for more in-depth information on kombucha, I have a couple blog posts that I'll link in the description box down below. Now, in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you how to make a scoby if you don't have one, as well as the process for the first fermentation and the process for the second fermentation. I'll be sure to include timestamps in the description box down below if there is a specific part that you would like to skip forward to and as always the full recipes will be included there as well. To make kombucha you're going to need just a few ingredients and there is a few steps to the process. You're going to need caffeinated tea, typically black tea is used however you can use green tea or white tea, it just does need to be caffeinated and ideally it's unflavored. You're also going to need sugar, a starter liquid which is essentially just plain brewed kombucha as well as the SCOBY. A SCOBY is a symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeasts, and the SCOBY is going to feed off the caffeine and the sugar in the sweetened tea to turn that into kombucha. You can purchase a SCOBY, get one from a friend, or make your own. If you don't have a SCOBY, you're going to follow these next instructions to learn how to make your own. If you do have a SCOBY, you can skip over to the steps for your first fermentation. Now, since you're looking to make your own SCOBY, I'm assuming you do not have a batch of kombucha brewing at home. If you did, that is what you would use as your starter liquid, but you can also go to the store and purchase either a local brand or I've had much luck with GT's brand. You want something that is plain, unflavored, unpasteurized. So for GT's, that would be the original or the pure. Start by adding 14 cups of water to a large pot and bringing that up to a boil. Once it comes to a boil, turn off the heat and stir in one cup of sugar. I recommend using a plain white or cane sugar. However, you can use something unrefined like sucanat or panela. They're just much higher in minerals, which I find can make the scoby a little bit sluggish. Stir the sugar into the hot water, and once it's dissolved, add in eight black tea bags or two tablespoons of loose leaf tea. Again, you can use another caffeinated tea, but typically black tea is used. Then cover the pot and set it aside until it is fully cooled. Once the sweetened tea is fully cooled, remove the tea bags and transfer the sweetened tea mixture to a gallon jar. To that, add the two cups of starter liquid or plain raw kombucha. Cover the jar with either a dish towel, a coffee filter, or a lid loosely. You want something that has a little bit of airflow but is going to be able to keep any critters out and set the jar aside. This is going to sit for at least four weeks until you see a scoby sitting at the top of the jar. It's going to start out looking like a little bit of a film at the top of the jar and slowly it is going to get thicker and thicker. Once you see that scoby reach about a quarter inch thick, it is ready to use in a future batch of kombucha. Each time you brew a batch of kombucha, you're going to see that your scoby gets larger and larger and it sort of has layers to it. So you can actually separate that scoby to either share one with a friend or use it in another batch of kombucha. Now to brew a batch of kombucha for the first fermentation, the tea mixture is the same as what was used to create the scoby. So in a large pot, bring 14 cups of water to a boil and then turn off the heat. Stir in a cup of sugar until it's fully dissolved and then add in eight black tea bags or again you could use two tablespoons of loose leaf tea. Once cooled, remove the tea bags and pour the tea mixture into a gallon jar and add in two cups of the starter liquid. That will be two cups of plain kombucha from your previous batch that you made or from when you were making the scoby. It's important that you do allow the tea mixture to fully cool before you add in the starter liquid or the kombucha to make sure that the heat from the tea does not kill off any of the good bacteria. If there is any temperature difference between the scoby and the tea mixture, you'll notice that when you add the scoby to the jar, the scoby is going to sink. That's nothing to worry about at all. Cover the jar loosely and set it aside for about 10 to 14 days on average. You'll notice that in the cooler months, the kombucha takes a little bit longer to ferment. I find that it can often take up to 21 days for that first fermentation. And in the warmer months, it can speed up the process a little bit. And sometimes it'll only take about seven days for that first fermentation. So take into consideration the time of year, the temperature in your home. And this is just something that you're going to learn as you go and you continue to ferment your own kombucha. The kombucha is ready for its second fermentation when the tea mixture has lightened in color, it is lightly sweet and a little bit tart or vinegary in taste. 
The second fermentation is where the kombucha is going to be flavored and become carbonated. Start by removing two cups of the brewed kombucha as well as the scoby and you can use that for your next batch. If you're not ready to brew another batch of kombucha immediately, you can just store that in the fridge in a jar. I like to use flip top bottles for my second fermentation. The ones that I'm using are 24 ounces, but you can also find single serve bottles that are only eight ounces or 16 ounces. And to each bottle, I'll use either a third of a cup of fruit juice or about a half cup of chopped or pureed fruit. You can also add fresh herbs or extracts as well. Blueberries, strawberries, or lemon and ginger are some of my favorites. I'll also leave a blog post with some more ideas in the description box down below, or also take into consideration some of the flavors that you enjoy from store-bought brands to use those as a guideline. I made a ton of blackberry syrup with our frozen blackberries or strawberries, so I've been liking using those along with some lemon juice to flavor ours lately. Because the syrups are sweeter than juice, I typically will do a little bit less, more like a quarter cup per 24 ounce flip top bottle. Add your flavoring and then top each bottle with the kombucha from the first fermentation, leaving at least an inch of headspace. Seal the bottles and allow them to sit at room temperature anywhere from two to 14 days. It's important to burp the bottles daily to reduce the buildup of pressure of the gases in the bottles. If you don't do this, too much pressure can build up and you can potentially run the risk of the bottle exploding. So you do want to make sure that you're doing this. The second fermentation can take anywhere from two to 14 days, just depending on your personal preference. During that time, the flavor of the kombucha is going to continue to develop. It is going to become carbonated. And the longer you let it ferment, the less sweet the kombucha will be. So there you have it, how to make a scoby and how to make kombucha, including the process for the first fermentation and the second fermentation. Only a few ingredients are needed. The process is super simple and it is much more cost effective to make it at home than to purchase in store. I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.